If you are my mom, and it is still 2021, please stop watching now. It's never come up in a video before, but one of my hobbies is knitting. I started doing it to get over my fear, dislike, uneasiness with the squishier crafts. I don't even like woodworking that much, it's so imprecise, so knitting was definitely a challenge, but I came to enjoy it. I started knitting baby sweaters for co-workers, and once you've established a pattern like that, it's hard to stop without seeming really rude to someone. So I usually end up doing that about once a year. And this year for Christmas, I've been knitting a sweater for my mother, hence the earlier interdiction. I've been using a new interchangeable needle set I won in a raffle, and I really like them. Definitely better than having to dig through my random sets of cirques. It came with these rather nice junctions, which let you join cables if you need something even longer, or to pull through a new cable if you want to go up or down in size. It also came with a bunch of these stoppers, for when you have to leave a section unfinished while working elsewhere in the pattern. This happens a lot around arms, for instance. But with the current pattern, I find myself running out of cables to leave in place. No problem, can always just go back to the old standard of threading through some waste yarn and tying it off. That's when I realized what seems like an odd oversight in this interchangeable kit. There isn't an attachment to provide a good way to pull yarn through behind a cable. Like a detachable eye of a needle or the business end of a fish tape. I'm sure they exist. They must, right? But the expert knitter in my life had never heard of such a thing, and I couldn't figure out the right search terms if they do exist. So, obviously, I had to make my own. First, I needed to figure out what thread my kit used. 56 threads per inch felt like a good fit, but I only had a 256 tap, and that was much too narrow. I guessed it was either 356 or M2.5 by 0.45, which happened to be extremely close to each other. Once I got some taps in those sizes, including this set of teeny tiny metric taps, I tested those two options. Both seemed to work fine, so I used the 356 only because it had a larger shaft and was easier to work with. To the lathe! I didn't make drawings or anything, since what I had in mind was pretty simple. Drilled and tapped one end, then cut a taper on that end so it could be pulled smoothly through the stitches. This is one quarter inch stainless rod, about the same diameter as a number 9 US needle, or 6 millimeters. I figured that was a bit excessive, since maybe I'd want to use this on a smaller gauge someday, so I turned the shaft down to about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Then I spent some time cleaning it up with sandpaper, so it would be nice and smooth for optimal flow. Putting the rod in a collet block, one of my absolutely favorite shop tools, I flattened opposing sides on the mill. I was thinking that a classic eye of a needle look would be nice. I did this with the side of a large end mill so it would leave a gentle radius on the lower edge, instead of a sharp cut for yarn to snag on. Then, flipping it 90 degrees, I started to carefully mill out a 2mm slot. But not carefully enough. Blast. I drilled out what remained of the slot in three places, then pulled out my old secret weapon, a jeweler saw. I don't use it much anymore, but before my shop had so many serious machine tools, it was a vital bit of kit. They're one of the things I always recommend to people trying to get started making stuff in metal. A little drill press, a jeweler saw, and some good files can get you a long way if you're patient enough. They're like tiny hacksaws, and they can cut very fine and precise holes in thinner material. So tiny that with the finer blades, you can't easily see the teeth at all and need to just run a finger along them to tell which way they're oriented. The blades are incredibly fragile, of course, so expect to break them regularly. There's a reason they are commonly sold not just by the dozen, but by the gross. Anyway, then it was just a matter of filing and sanding everything to be as clean and smooth as possible. I wasn't entirely happy with the inside of the slot, but otherwise I think it came out pretty well. Time to try it out. And for pulling yarn through behind the cable, it worked well. The diameter could have been a bit less, but at least at this gauge, US number 8, it pulled through very cleanly. Unfortunately, waste yarn is usually a two-way process. Eventually, you're going to want to use the yarn to pull a new cable through when you're ready to work on that section again. And in that direction, the eye didn't work very well at all. The top end of the eye needed to slip between stitches easier. The transition from the flat to full round was abrupt enough, even with the radius, that the stitches would snag a bit. And it kept wanting to twist sideways because of how the yarn was pulling, making it even harder to get through. Halfway there, maybe, but not acceptable. Back to the shop. Mark II had several improvements. Even narrower, down to an eighth of an inch to match the cable stud. 
No more flattened sides, so that transition can't snag when being pulled backwards. Since I had broken my only 2mm end bell, I skipped directly to drilling and then sawing out the slot this time. This was all definitely an improvement when the cable was pulling yarn, very smooth now, but still not great when the yarn was pulling the cable. I filed in these two grooves into either side of the upper tip so that the yarn can sit in them, with the hope that it would pull more evenly that way. And then I thought one last polish would be nice, so I chucked it in the drill. Looked great until I realized what the drill chuck had done to the threaded end. Double blast. I really need to get a collet attachment for my lathe. Mark III was the same thing all over again, only this time I pre-cut the grooves with an incredibly tiny 1mm end mill, managing to somehow not break it in the process. And then I continued the groove all the way around the tip with hand files. This one worked... Mm, okay. If you tie the knot just right, the yarn is pulling more or less axially with the eye, but it still wants to twist sideways and jam. There is kind of a trick to guiding it along with one hand, but it's still not smooth by any means. Getting a bit tired of the project, I tried one last idea for a Mark IV. This one tried to make the tension as axial as possible by having it pull through the exact center of the attachment. A small hole is drilled all the way through, so yarn can be threaded through and a knot tied to keep it from pulling out. Except the hole is too small for the yarn I was using, so I had to use floss to thread through some sock weight yarn instead. While theoretically sound, the end result wasn't really any better. I think I'll stick with the Mark III version, so I don't need to carry dental floss around in my knitting kit. So that's it, my fish tape attachments for interchangeable needles. I guess I see now why these aren't already a thing, but it was a fun little experiment at least. Oh, and I think the sweater came out pretty well.